Our society has countless images, ideas, and stereotypes about change agents. People who help an organization transform by improving business process and interpersonal interactions. Whether influencing fashion, business, art, entertainment, science, politics, or law, these change agents have and continue to positively impact today's society on so many levels. And today, we are proud to share the story of these business owners, coaches, innovators, and thought leaders from various industries who are eager to educate, inspire, and motivate you. This is Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Our Voices, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Roommate, co-host of Woken Free, and the lifestyle editor of Plus Model Magazine. And this show is focused on highlighting the amazing work of powerful change agents who have a great message to share with the world. And today, I'm super duper excited to be speaking with the talented actress and career coach, Bethany Kay. So who is Bethany? She got her wit from 13 years of Catholic school, her smirk, her smirk from her Jersey family, and her curves from a very healthy love of her mom's tortellini with lemon cream sauce. If you like your comedy, then or or your drama, served with a wry, old fashioned, and a side of snark, she's definitely your gal. When she's not working on shows like Boardwalk Empire, Difficult People, Gotham, and as the scene stealing embodiment of body positivity. On Dietland, she's probably creating some devised theater and clowning projects with friends. She can also be spotted people watching in New York City and blissing out to some Bonavere, and she's definitely a West Side gal. So, with that, how are you, Bethany? I am so good. Are you kidding? It's a Monday night, and I almost had the full day off, so it's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. Okay, so you have quite the bio. I definitely want to break that apart. So first, uh, if you could uh, tell everyone, how did you become the woman you are today? How did you get into acting? Share all those deets. I went to a theater camp starting when I was five years old because oh, wow. I was obsessed with my big sister Aww. and her best friend and I wanted to follow them to a camp <laughs> and lo and behold from day one I guess I was a little bit extra so they <laughs> gave me the fun role starting when I was like five years old I mean can you imagine eight-year-old me playing Ursula in a half-hour little bit naughty version of The Little Mermaid but the person who wrote our script um would definitely write some adult jokes in, which we didn't realize until, you know, we were older and I was rereading the script. Oh, wow. But, um, that's when I started. Yeah, and I grew up a singer. Oh, I grew up wow. going and singing in church and taking mm. voice lessons from when I was 12, too. Oh, wow. Jersey. So you just loved. Mm. So what do you love about, I guess, theater, acting, singing? What 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 drives you inside of you, essentially, to, to be so drawn and attracted to this? I'm a people watcher and I love mm. words. So anytime when I can perhaps, it's not necessarily go outside myself, although there are those roles that will require that, mm -hmm. but where I can watch other people and say, oh, this person that I'm working on, that, that person that I saw on the street today that maybe her shoulders are sagged down a little bit low and she's leading with this part of her body instead of where I usually lead, which is my hips usually as a curvy girl <laughs> in confidence. Yes. <laughs> It's kind of cool to take on someone else's body for a moment. Mm. I just did a, a play at the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey, and I mean, it was it was not the way that I walk oh. at all, and that okay. was kind of fun to find that. Yeah, okay, so finding another way to move and exist that's mm. not me. Interesting. And what would you say has been the most meaningful lesson you've learned so far in your career as as a actor, actress, as a content creator, all of that? I mean, it's an ongoing lesson. It's not something that will ever be mastered. Just be patient. I'm not a patient person. Mm. I'm a very much a Jersey girl. I like to make things happen. I like to go and I, I, I want to move people along with me. Mm -hmm. And in this industry, especially for um, whatever euphemism you want to use, fat, curvy, plus size, whatever, <laughs> actors. Yeah. We've had to, to be patient. And mm. it is such an exciting time right now in the industry to see breakdowns, which are the um, the description of what the role will be, breakdowns that come out mm -hmm. that aren't, she's sad with her everyday life. 
um, she's the butt of the joke. There's some really exciting things happening now. Mm-hmm. We also, though, continue to see that same narrative. I won't name the show, but yeah. I think you know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. what, it, when do you think we will stop seeing that? Or will we ever stop seeing that? Is that just kind of... I don't think you will. Mm-hmm. I don't think you will stop mm-hmm. seeing that. Okay. I think we... We think in tropes. If you go back to Shakespeare, if you go to musical theater, um, and when I'm coaching actors, this comes up a lot, uh, Mm -hmm. especially with people who uh, I think when we talk about branding, I mean, Mm -hmm. you you know about this with social media, Mm -hmm. knowing, I think, the the thing that's most outstanding about you and running with it. And sometimes it's not what's conventionally what society would call the most attractive thing. Mm. Um, So... uh, you know, uh, in terms of branding, we want to find the, the path of no resistance to getting people to know at our core mm-hmm. what we're going to be the best to do. Uh, and in terms of creating character content, unfortunately, there are the tropes of mm-hmm. the sad girl next door who can't get the guy. Well, this is a place where we can put an overweight person. It just makes sense to the general public. Mm -hmm. What I like now are shows that are taking that and saying, okay, let's start here. Let's get you interested because it's a story that you know. And then say, well, watch what happens next. Mm, Gotcha. That's what's happening in one of the shows you may be referencing. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha. The other one is written by a friend of mine. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so we won't. Yes, the we so, won't spill too much tea well, there. Sure okay. <laughs> oh wow. Conversation past. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And <laughs> what are the keys? Uh, being, you know, as you said, right? If you want to say plus size, uh, curvy, voluptuous. What is the key well, for for having that narrative as an actress and and succeeding? Because you you you've been a part of some really impressive productions so far in your career. It's been such a year. It has been an overwhelming, phenomenal year um, mm-hmm. for, for for my career and for moments. The key has been knowing my no line mm. and knowing when that can go away. Look, we, we've all been offered roles and, and everyone has been offered a role where they're the butt of a joke. Mm-hmm. But when I'm offered a role or I go out for a role where literally... I'm the alternative to the hot thing and therefore made fun of and, oh, that guy can't get a hot girl, so let's throw her this girl. And we've seen that all the American Pie movies, things like that. It's Mm -hmm. lowest common denominator entertainment. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be a part of that? Do I want to be the woman that's put up on, you know, uh, that's dancing provocatively, wearing hardly any clothing for the lead actor to make fun of? I don't. Mm. I don't think it's witty. I do improv comedy. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not uh, popping up the joke. It's just going down to the lowest common denominator, mm-hmm. and it's not interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And it's insulting to me as somebody who, by the way, can get the hot guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So like, when you have a role like Janice's Island come along, and she's telling the truth i mean she says you know i she has empathy for the people in the room who feel like they have to be another thing entirely in order to be accepted by the people in their lives how sad is that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't ever want to be that person on camera guess what if it comes to a point where it's a huge project and i need to figure out take this or or and my career will change dramatically then we talk about it and we see if we can talk to the team and find a better way to present it gotcha. but that's knowing you're no one absolutely that it's a it's a decision rather than a happenstance mm-hmm you are listening to Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest today is actress and career coach Bethany Kay. You are completely uh, correct about uh, everything you just said. I, I really generally appreciate that honesty and the candor because, you know, there are, uh, unfortunately, there are moments in our careers where, where we have to find a way to compromise but not compromise who we are in order to, to, to go to the next level. But compromise sometimes is a part of the conversation. It's a part of rising. And, uh, you know, you have to, you just have to find a way to make it work for you and, and figuring out, yeah, like where your line in the sand cannot be crossed. Like, 
like non-negotiable no's, essentially. Yeah, and knowing that it's my choice that's mm-hmm. being made based mm-hmm. on the given circumstances. It's not, I have to take this because of XYZ. It's, I choose mm. to do this. Absolutely. Because XYZ. Absolutely. And how has networking played a role in, in some of the success you've had so far? I love talking about networking, mm-hmm. as, as especially as a coach. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think you need to lead with who you are genuinely as a person. Mm-hmm. If you go into a room to just see who you can use to get somewhere else, mm-hmm. you feel it. They feel it. Mm-hmm. The room feels it. It just feels like we've all been at those events mm-hmm. where the moment you enter, someone says, hey, you're so-and-so. Can I give you my card? I was really about Get to know me as a person. I love getting to know other people mm-hmm. and lead from there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Longevity and mm-hmm. patience in this career is what allows for those genuine relationships to really come to fruition. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't. When you get pushy, and Lord knows, I spent many years being pushy. You can ask my grad school classmates. I spent many years being pushy. <laughs> it doesn't help anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 it's, a, it's about like being. I'm all about being persistent, and and definitely, you know, if it means yeah. eight emails, it means eight emails. But listen, it's just how kind of like guys. How how are we listening to the amazing Bethany K on our voices here in ninety point three WHPC networking? I met her. She had a dope skirt on. I was like, "You're what? amazing." I can't even. <laughs> And we got to talking and I said, hey, I have to have her on my radio. So in in a, in this conversation alone, we're proof evidence that like networking can always <laughs> work in your favor. We if it, if it ha- people take, mm-hmm. Yeah, we were helping people take photos at this mm-hmm. event because we all wanted to take photos at this event mm-hmm. and then just struck up a conversation. Mm-hmm. That's genuine. Exactly. That's not, oh, I see that person in the corner. Let me go talk to them. Ew, ah. <laughs> no, and casting directors in my industry, mm-hmm. they can feel it. Mm-hmm. And there are those people who just, you're not on the same wavelength with, and that always feels, oh, when and there have been times when I've left a room and I've said to somebody, because I'm me, mm-hmm. I really love your energy. There's something just about who you are that I can't wait to get to learn as I come in for your office more. And of course, I didn't say exactly like that. Mm-hmm. But then the response is, okay, well, I'm sure you'll be back. No, I mean it genuinely. And there are moments where you don't hit the bullseye on those. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and uh and even though we have been talking on a positive note, I- positive note, I do want to uh, kind of open the conversation up to what are some of the challenges you face as a plus size uh curvy actress? Yeah, again, it's still not as many roles for me mm-hmm. or uh generally going to be in comedy mm. gotcha. you're, you're going to find a lot more people who are quote outside what society again terms of the norms of attractiveness i mean mm-hmm. you and i are both very attractive ladies so Aww, let's just put that you. to the side but just for the sake of this yeah this conversation it, it tends to be in comedy mm. um and so in and for the actors who are listening to this out there i think you'd relate to this when you go in for things that aren't comedy you can feel a little bit larger than the room needs mm. <laughs> because we're so used to pushing the joke mm. or pushing the scene forward in a way that drama doesn't necessarily need. So that's just a technically tough thing. Okay. Uh, and then getting the same media attention mm. when you're talking about doing step and repeats and trying to get in there, it's not quite as easy, although... It's getting better. It mm-hmm. sure is. Okay, awesome. And would you say so far you've been you felt pressure to to change who you're you who who you are or how you look in this industry as of yet or no? It's a conversation I had quite a bit when I was in grad school with my teachers. I went to the New School for Drama uh, in New York City, nice. and the head of my program and I had a chat about that mm-hmm. um, about whether or not. And and I was told because of who I am, and this is a whole other conversation, too, that I would either have to gain a significant amount of weight or lose a significant amount of weight in order to more squarely fit into, quote, the categories that they're looking for for certain roles. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I 
came out of school and I wasn't really working and I was trying to do musical theater because I have this huge singing voice and everyone wanted me to be a belter because, you know, 